Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. I am here to help you make sense of everything you've been learning in class. In this video, we are going to take word equations and we're gonna write chemical equations. So if you're looking for an intro to balancing or some tips and tricks for balancing those difficult equations, go check out those previous videos. Now we're ready to take a sentence, translate that into a chemical equation. So go get your notes and your periodic table and let's get started. Now this is going to take a lot of writing chemical formulas. So if you struggle with that, check the link up above. I've sent you some help. When solid copper reacts with aqueous silver nitrate, the products are aqueous copper two nitrate and solid silver. Let's go through this really carefully. First thing I want to call your attention to, when the word sentence talks about the states of matter. We've got solid copper. It reacts with aqueous silver nitrate. The products are aqueous copper two nitrate and solid silver. We do normally show these when they're here. And you're just going to use a little S for solid in parentheses or AQ for aqueous. And we'll come back to that in a second. You could also have gas. You could also have liquid. So you'll see me using these when we do this. Let me go back to aqueous right quick. In case you've not heard of this word before, an aqueous solution, water is always the solvent. So it's always some compound dissolved in water, aqueous solution. We don't call that liquid. The word liquid is reserved for things that are liquid at room temperature and in their normal state, like water. Now, some other things that we need to pay attention to. Let me use a different color so you can see. These, this word reacts, the products are, okay, so if something is going to react with something else, they're gonna to have to be on the reactant side of the equation. And then when it says the products are, that's our clue that we just stopped talking about reactants and started talking about products. I've pointed a few things out. Let's just go ahead and write this chemical equation. When solid copper, so let's write the symbol for copper, and it's a solid, so we're going to put a little subscript with it. Reacts with plus. Copper is going to react with something else. Silver nitrate. Now I'm going to come off over here and figure out silver nitrate. Silver, always a plus one, even though it's a transition metal. Nitrate. NO3, but it's also a one. Remember, ionic compounds, we want them to be neutral. Plus one, minus one, that equals zero. So we've got AgNO3. It's one to one, so I don't need a I don't need a parenthesis. And it is aqueous. So we're gonna put a little A Q in parentheses. The products are, that is our clue that we need to draw our yields arrow. Aqueous copper two nitrate. Copper, it's a plus two because of this Roman numeral two. Nitrate. NO3 minus one, this does not equal zero. That means it's going to take two nitrates for every one copper if we're gonna get that to equal zero. So we're gonna have CuNO3, two. And it said aqueous, so I'm gonna put that little AQ. And solid silver, so and, that's gonna be a plus. Silver, that's a solid. Now, I wasn't sure if I wanted to um, balance these, but you know what? You can only balance them if you write them correctly. So let's look at this. I'm just going to balance it quickly. I'm not going to do the chart method. We have two nitrates, so we could put a two here. Oh, that made us have two silvers, so I'm gonna go put a two with silver, and that's it. One copper, one copper, two silvers, two silvers, two nitrates, two nitrates. We're good. Let's try another example. Aluminum sulfate and calcium hydroxide are both aqueous solutions that react, I'll pay attention to that, to produce two solids, aluminum hydroxide, calcium sulfate. So we've got calcium hydroxide, that's a reactant, and aluminum sulfate, that's a reactant. And then we have aluminum hydroxide and calcium sulfate. Those are both products. We've got to make sure we're writing these formulas correctly though. Aluminum, aluminum is a plus three. Sulfate, 
is a minus 2. So if we crisscross those numbers, we are going to get Al2SO4 3 and it says it's an aqueous solution so I'm going to put a little AQ for aqueous and so I'm going to put a plus calcium hydroxide calcium is a 2 hydroxide is a 1 so if I cross those down it's going to take two hydroxides to equal a calcium so calcium two hydroxides to produce two solids aluminum hydroxide well, we've got aluminum here. Aluminum was a three. Right here, aluminum was a three. Hydroxide is a one. So if we crisscross that, or if we think it's going to take three hydroxides to equal one aluminum, that would be correct. ALOH3, it said it was solid, plus calcium sulfate. I'm gonna go back over here. Calcium was a 2, sulfate was a 2. That's just a 1 to 1 ratio. So we're going to have CaSO4. They just cancel each other out. And it also said that that was a solid. If we want to balance this real quick, I'm not going to use the chart method. I'm just going to balance it. Okay, so if I've got two, if I've got two aluminums here, I need two aluminums here. So two, now that made me have two times three hydroxides. Two times three, that's six. I already have two hydroxides, so I'm just gonna put a three. Oh, that made me have three calcium. So now I'm gonna come over here, put three calcium, but that gave me three sulfates. Oh, but that's okay, that's how many sulfates I had to begin with. Okay. Let's try another example. Ooh, before we get to this example, we need to talk about something. Diatomic molecules. Now, you may have already talked about diatomic molecules. You probably have. Let's list them so we can remember what they are. Hydrogen is diatomic. Nitrogen is diatomic. Oxygen is diatomic. Fluorine is diatomic. Bromine is diatomic and iodine is diatomic. There are seven diatomic molecules. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm missing one. Oh, chlorine. Duh. Oh, I want to put it in order. Bear with me. I'm going to erase. Chlorine diatomic, bromine, and iodine. When I say order, let's think about the periodic table right quick. Let me just rough, total rough draft. Ooh, that was terrible. Hydrogen's off over here, but then we have nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Now, I remember that I remember the diatomic molecules because they make a number seven on the periodic table. There are seven of them and they make a seven on the periodic table. That's why a while ago when I was like, ah, I wanted to put chlorine in order because it's right there after fluorine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. They make a seven. Now I realize this hydrogen is not a part of the seven, but it still helps me to remember seven diatomic molecules. Most of them make a seven on the periodic table. Now we had that little mini lesson right there because we are going to come across oxygen gas in this problem and that's diatomic no clue is going to be given to you that it's diatomic you're just gonna have to know that okay let's start back at the beginning carbon dioxide gas and liquid water are formed that means carbon dioxide gas and liquid water those were products they're formed from the burning of liquid toluene and oxygen gas so let's start writing that Toluene and oxygen gas are going to be our reactants. So we're going to have C7H8, because most of us don't know the formula for toluene. Oxygen gas. You've got to put O2, because we have to know oxygen diatomic. There's no clue. No clue. Now, it is a gas, and toluene was a liquid. Let's put that. 
Now, these are our reactants. Our products were carbon dioxide, gas, and water, which is a liquid. Okay, that one looks pretty good. Do we want to balance it? Now, if you remember from my tips, we've got oxygen in one space here. We've got oxygen in two places here. That tells me I'm going to do it last. So I'll do carbon and hydrogen first. We've got seven carbons, and we need eight hydrogen, so I'm going to put a four here. Okay, now I'm ready. Seven times two, that was 14 oxygens, plus four, that's 18 oxygens, so I'm going to just put a nine right here. Okay, I think I've got one or two more examples. Let's keep looking. Oxygen gas, oh look, oxygen gas came back to play and solid silver are produced, that means these are products from the breakdown of silver oxide powder. That's our reactant. Silver oxide. Silver, even though it's a transition metal, it's always a one. Oxygen is a two. So we're going to get a G2O, and it is a powder. Now, we don't have a little letter for powder, but powder is a solid. That was our only reactant because we're breaking it down into oxygen gas, got to remember that diatomic, and solid silver. Okay, let's balance this one. We've got two silvers. Oh, but you know what? I already see that that's going to get messed up, so I'm not going to start there. I'm noticing, right when I was about to write the two with silver, I noticed this two on oxygen, and there's only one right here. So I'm just going to back right on up and put a two here. Now I've got two oxygens, two oxygens. Now I've got four silver. It wouldn't have been a big deal to erase, but who wants to if you can see something beforehand? That one was pretty easy. Okay, y'all. If y'all have watched all of my videos for this series, you are feeling good about balancing those easy ones and hard ones. You can also take word equations and translate that into chemical equations. I hope you feel like a pro. And remember, it just takes practice. If you're not feeling good about it, keep practicing. I know you'll get it. Until next time, bye, y'all.